This conference will now be recorded. And I'm going to share this with you, and then you can take over and take it away. Let's see here. So you should be getting a um, request for to take over access. There you go. Okay. Awesome. I thought we would start with a one minute. I don't know what time frame you use. Um, I have my, I have yours on um, on my Sierra, and it's basically just a volume bar chart. But that that doesn't matter the time frame here because there, I, I would assume because I had questions in the room like well I don't know the time frame I need to I, I wouldn't assume they would change based on the time frame you're looking at. Right? No, the levels don't change, but I think everybody kind of gravitates towards a style, a bar style. Right. Yeah. Of course. That just um, is easy for them to see and read. Right. For me, it's Rankos. I love Rankos. I think Sierra's got the worst Rankos, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's uh, you definitely get what you pay for with Sierra. I mean, they're they're fine, but it's just you got to do everything yourself. I mean, it's it's very tedious. Well, let's put it this way. Um, Sierra was on its way out the door for me yeah, because <laughs> I just didn't have enough people on that platform to continue to support it. And now, of course, you know, that's changed. So I think Sierra is kind of laughing at me. But that's, uh, that's bad news for me because I have it on my Sierra chart. <laughs> well, I'm going to keep it now because of oh, you. Yeah. Oh, oh, great. <laughs> Cool. Because I don't have, I don't want to pay for Ninja Trader as well, so that's good. No, I mean, like I said, I was it. I, I could just scream every time I go on to Sierra. Yeah. Well, that's saying something. Consider you're a computer programmer. Can you imagine someone like me that has no no idea what they're doing? I mean, it's like a it's like reading Chinese or something. When I got when I first built my charts, I was just like, what? It took me like an hour just to build like a candlestick chart. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Uh, this is something that's only in Ninja right now, um, and I didn't do it in Sierra because of the low interest I had for users, a low number of users, but mm -hmm. uh, I would certainly appreciate your opinion on it, and if I should have the programmer work on this. This is um, a toggle that lets you see the prior set of levels. Okay. I like it a lot. It kind of um, provides me with some information. Well, I can see on my Sierra, I can see on some of my charts, I can see the prior levels. They stay on the. Yeah, they'll stay on, but they don't draw in tune with the current set of levels. Right. I mean, you you would just if you have enough space or whatever, you would see them, you know, oh, back over here. But there are times that, uh, especially when I get um, close to a key area, and you see this. Let's see if I can bring this up. And I thought I had a gold chart set up. Let's just do it this way. If I hit show prior, that's my prior direction line. So it boxes in this big red area for me. Okay. I guess it's helpful if you're zeroed in on a chart, you don't have to scroll, like drag the chart back to see where the prior boxes are, right? That's the whole right. idea. Right. It kind of just 
<clears throat> let you see if there's you know something else that might catch it. Like sometimes when we sit here in what I kind of call airspace and we can't get down to here, I'm like, okay, what caught it? And I'll do that. And I'm like, oh, okay, that's what caught it. Oh, I got it, yeah. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, I mean, that would be great if you can do it for Sierra, but other than that, I, I guess manually you can scroll back, but that is definitely, that would be helpful. So how helpful are the, are the pass boxes though? I mean, what, are, are, I mean, how, how strong are they, I should say? What it helps is when the market, just like in CL today, it just broke a big red, just enough to generate new levels. Just, you know, really, and then just died up here. So I find this helpful because if I go back here and look at it, if I break this, I am looking for down in, you know, this area and this green line. So if I break the direction line giving me cell signals, I know I've got to break that and then I would be looking down in here. But there's a lot of times that it'll just have a it's kind of like stop popping or probing and it goes just enough to set a new set of levels and won't even go this far, just hugs the direction line and falls back below the prior big red. Well, that tells me that I'm gonna have higher probability of, of rotation or movement back towards uh, these prior areas. And I would consider this a, a zone. That's because you're saying if it didn't make that higher high there or with this chart alone, you think it has a better chance of going back? If it breaks this red line, it does. If it and breaks this it? red. Well, because now this was a major resistance area. This should okay. be if we're going to stay in this set of new levels and get up here. Uh -huh. I really should hold this prior resistance. You know, it's the same adage. What was resistance is now support right and then it should hold this go back above direction towards the new orange and if it can't it's rotating or turning back down i think you kind of look at it as um, back filling the profile right well i would look at it as kind of like i do with the stuff i look at now if it's what doesn't happen, right? So if it, if right. it gets below there, it should have ripped higher. It didn't. Now, now you want to reconvert, for retraces back. Yeah. Okay. And there's <laughs> there's a lot of times where, like I said, it just goes enough to generate a yellow line, and then it'll just hang right on the yellow line, break, and then uh, fall back down. Right. So that's where I find it useful. I'm primarily an ES trader. I'll trade gold early morning, but uh, I'm not a NASDAQ trader. No. I, I, that's just, it's just not my market, even though there's right. tremendous opportunity there. Well, maybe when you learn how to use the SI indicator properly, you might you <laughs> might uh, you might start oh, liking can, a little more. I can see it all day long. It's just I don't know. It's just yeah, you know, like when it probed above big red and couldn't generate new levels this morning, and then got back under it, and is you know I would have been that would have been my sell signal. That would have been what I was you know you have clear. You have clear you're wrong right you know right. you tried to go higher just what we were talking about major resistance fall back down it's still major resistance i would this time around that would be i would be all over that i'd have no you know that's 
looking for down here at the direction. Right. So let me see that. So that was today. Hold on, let me swim look at my chart because I had a different, I thought I had different bubbles here. Let me see. 13.4. Yeah, no, you had the same. Yeah, so that first time down at 13.4, how, co how come that's not showing? Oh, you, that's at 11 o'clock because it went down and tested that yellow, right? Right. right. This is central time. Okay. Oh, okay. That's why you're, it just looked like, like there was nothing to the right of that. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that was actually a very good long down there um, based on the volume signals and stuff as well. Yeah, it looked like that worked out very well. Yeah, came back at the end of the day, but that was a <clears throat> that was a good area to take a shot at along. So this is, you know, I think everybody knew, you know, seventy nine quarter, seventy nine half, how strong that had been for rejection. I think this was running all the stops. Well, so that's that's where now we say I think is running the stops. Now you can actually see once you learn how to read those when you get the SI indicator on Bookmap, you'll be able to see if it's actual stops or not, right? There's always right. been this adage out there like I can't tell you how many educators I've seen like oh yeah, this was a stop run. This this was a, this they ran the stop check. Now you can really see if there it's an actual stop run. Right. That's right. That, that's the beauty of the CME MBO data. <clears throat> right. Whereas I would look at it as soon as I cross back here, it was a stop run. As soon as I cross back below that prior high of the day. So what time? Let me I'll tell you right now if it was a stop run. That was nine. So that was. I don't know. They hit them hard and fast. It was nine. Right at nine o'clock. Are you that central time? Yeah, that's central time. Be seven o'clock my time. I thought you were in Chicago. Uh, I was for 45 years and I left, thank God. Now I'm in Arizona. I can't take that weather anymore, along with everything else that's going on there. Yeah, so it's like there was no major, the only stop run that was worth worthwhile was um, actually, I think we talked about this on the morning session we did. Um, you can see it on the chart here. Oh, you can't see my chart, but if you watch that, um, actually, I got to give you access to the replace folder. You can go back and watch any webinar that you want since I've been doing it uh, for the last month. But there was a stop run from um, started right around 75 ish all the way up to 7650. That was a 500 lot stop run. And then it failed, and then it went higher from there. But after that, there were no real substantial stop runs up there. Huh. So it's just going to be good for you to see to confirm. Like there, there was there was um, buy ice that failed right around the same area, right around 75, 76. But it's it's just going to be good for you to confirm like what you used to think of stop runs. You're like, oh wait, maybe that wasn't a stop run. Okay, right? It's just it's just really it's the most powerful information you can have as far as I'm concerned in the stops and the icebergs. And then when, again, I've already seen the power just overlaying that, those things with your, um, with your levels, right? The thing is, what doesn't happen, like we just talked about, it's the same thing with the volume. At that high there, there was nothing, nothing going on, right? So there was no icebergs, there was nothing, and it just touched that level and rejected, right? So what I've noticed just so far in the, you know, the whopping two days I've been watching your levels on my charts that, you need a major event, a major volume event to pierce your levels so far that I've seen, right? So one way you can trade your levels that I'm that I'm seeing already is if it comes up to a major level like that, up at 85 there, and nothing is happening, you can fade that level with confidence, right? Right. That's exactly what I do. Yeah. Now, this morning, I would not have automatically sold it. Right. Yeah, it was definitely across the board. It looked, you know, we've been having 4180 as the line in the sand. If it got above there, then I was definitely going to turn bullish. But 
Uh, it was very short lived, but yeah, I would not have sold there either myself. Right, but when it came, you know, screaming down and started piercing this, I was selling here at 78. Right. Yeah, and that ended up that ended up actually being this is a setup. Um, let me. Uh, I'll just take this quickly, just to give you a little example. Show you how powerful this thing is. <clears throat> so you can see right here. You see my chart. Uh huh. Okay. So that was this exact area here. I mean, you sold at 78, but nothing. There was no event until here, and you can see there was over 2,000 buy ice icebergs in the book, meaning the hidden hidden orders buying, and that's what this zone is, right? And it held the zone, and it broke it, and this is the exact setup we look for, right? So many times when these markets break the zone, you'll get a retest. Close. So you'll get a retest, and then when it retests. And then when it fails again, so it retests, it barely got above it. it you know, we, we, we use at least three points above to invalidate the zone. So this zone was perfectly intact. And then when it finally you know, retests and broke, and then this was the trade, right? So knowing this stuff on top of you know, like your levels that failed, then all of a sudden you say to yourself, okay, now here's buy ice, meaning huge money trying to hold this market up and they're wrong. And you have all these factors and you can see, look, look where this retest, look how powerful these zones are, right? Then it comes back. Later on, zone held again, right? Failed again, right. right? So again, when you start to understand this and you overlay it with your levels, it's like you're going to be even better than you are now. And then right, and what will well, that will do for me is it'll get me in when it can't get to a level. Exactly. Like if I was sitting there waiting for it to go back to 78, I would have missed the whole thing. Right, exactly. You would then you would have said, okay, wait a second. Here comes big iceberg. Okay, uh, it's holding, and this is not getting back above. These guys are wrong, and now they're really wrong. Here's the retest. Now I'm short, gone. Right. Right. Now look at that. That's a that's a nice trade right there. All right, I'll get this back to you. But yeah, that's exactly what I look for. You know, in my uh, so that's what I'm what I want to learn from you is kind of like what you're saying. It's like. It sounds to me what what you're saying is what doesn't happen really a lot of times it doesn't have to happen right at the level if it doesn't get to the level that's information as well is that right that, that's true okay but when do you determine that though like so say here um i mean it didn't get to the big red but when do you determine like again saying you didn't know anything about icebergs or anything like which you don't yet but when do you say, okay, this is this is bearish for for right now? Like this is not going back. When it gets back below that orange or whatever color that is, I'm colorblind, so I have a, I have a hard time seeing colors. So I think that's orange, right? Yeah, it's orange. Okay. But is that what how you like? When do you say, okay, we didn't get through the red? When do you say? I want to short this market without knowing anything else. You said you got short 78. Is that because we got back through the orange? Right. That's because I got back through the orange. Okay. Because I should be holding this, taking out big red and generating new levels if we're going up towards the 90s. So that's my next question. So if we when we if we do break big red, how long? Does a uh, does a new line usually form right away, or new do new levels form right away, or does it take a while? Like how does that work? Well, there's a whole bunch of like checklists that have to happen for it to generate new levels. Like in Nasdaq, we went what 30 points above big red, but it still didn't have all of the components to shift higher. Okay. So even though, I mean, with NASDAQ, this morning, I would have wanted to see this break, come in and hold here, and go higher. So first time into here, I would have taken a shot at that holding, going long, looking for new levels to 
come into play. Right. And when it didn't and fell back down, then I'm looking to sell it. Okay. And this would be, I would sell the line because we've already had this information. So is the non-formation of levels, is that a quote unquote signal, right? Like you said, we got above there, we got 30 points above that big red and we did not form new levels. Does that give you any yes. indication or is that just? Oh yes, that's telling you that the market's still um, in a resistant state, in a weaker state. We should have come in, held this and gone higher and generated new levels because this should have become a support area now. Right, so what I'm saying is if that breaks that, and then you say to yourself, there is no new levels formed, that is just give you more confidence? Oh yeah. Okay. If I if I can't generate, if all the, comp all the checks in the block are not lined up to generate a new set of levels, it tells me that this set is still in play and I'm looking for here. Got it. But you know, a lot of you know this. This is when I get the emails. Well, it broke it and it went 30 points higher. Why didn't I get a new set of levels? Right. And you say because that should actually told you not to not to go long that you didn't get the new levels. Right. Or you could have taken a shot here and risked to here. Because if right, that's you broke. Another question. How far, how far below will you risk? So say you did take that long, is there like some kind of, I don't know how there would be, but what, is there a certain uh, amount of to your risk below the zone? Now, if, if it were way down here, I wouldn't take a long here, but you can see we've got this little bunch here that's pretty tight to the level. Right. I would risk to one, one tick below that bar. Got it. But if this didn't set up, I mean, if it weren't this tight, I don't know if I would take a tremendous amount of risk on it because I want to see it come in and, and hit with a lot of enthusiasm. So I wouldn't, right. you know, as soon as I'm here, I'm looking at, and to me, that's a, that's a gift. I mean, you could wait till it broke there if you wanted to be on the safer Thank side. You. Right. Okay, so then now talk to me about how. So why do you th why do you think that because Big Red didn't hold that will make it all the way down to the yellow or further? Like what what is the reasoning behind that? That will make it all the way there. I mean, is there some kind of like intrinsic like I, I don't understand. Just because Red failed, it should it should it should go to yellow or blue. It should at least go back to yellow. And I guess it's, you know, more um, experience just with it. It should come all the way back here. Okay. Now, what makes that wrong is, of course, taking out that. So, say we held here and rallied past that, well, then. That, you know, like which, what you said is if something doesn't happen, it also means something. Right. If I got stuck right in the 50% level of these two areas and rallied back up and took that out, we should, we should fly. Got it. And then what are the other, what are the sub, the other lines? Again, I can't see them. I'm assuming the other ones like matched up with the red here. Is right. That why? Okay. Yeah, the magenta and the orange all matched up with the red and they're all stacked right there. Okay. And what are the other lines? They're just. Well, the orange is, the orange is a target line and it's usually a little bit further. You know, it's down in here somewhere. And then the magenta is kind of like we saw on the ES, 
this is a strong line, but it's not as strong as big red. Okay. So in an ideal situation, we would have a direction line with an orange line, a magenta line, and a big red. But this all came out on the, on the algo calculations as the same number, which is telling me they're stacked and that this is a strong number. Okay. So I've got okay. three levels that computed to the same number here and it broke and held. So if there's multiple levels on top of each other, that just goes to say it's a stronger level. Stronger level. Okay. And then how do you play it if it's before that? Say say you bought it the yellow and we're coming up there and then you have the sub levels before that. How do you play that? Do you do you get out of the struggle there or do you just ignore them? Like how do you what I do is take profits at those areas. Okay. Like um Let's go back to ES. Here, take profits, tighten a stop. If we rotate back up, taking profits, tightening my stop, we broke here, I'm selling again through here, taking profits in here. And today we were clearly more biased to the downside as well as more of a back and forth market, whereas yesterday we were pretty much in a trend day. Right. So I was looking more at, you know, buying the levels and then taking profits. So did did you want to see it as on a volume chart or? No, I mean, it, that doesn't really make a difference. It's just different bars drawn. I just, I'm just trying to understand. I just want to understand the best ways to, like, for instance, Chris lately, I mean, he's, you know, he introduces the levels in my room and then he's like doing stuff like, you know, we're below the yellow and he's like, ah, I'm long. It's like, well, I, I don't understand. I thought you said you want to be long above the yellow. So he's kind of confusing me and other people. And that's just what he does sometimes, you know, because he's looking at other stuff too and it's understandable, but, and he obviously it's his money to trade however he wants to trade. But I, I he's just right. it's confusing me too, because it's like from just the little, I've heard from him, you know, his instructions on them, like he's saying, you know, you want to be, if we get above the yellow and you want to be buying above the yellow, if you're below the yellow, you want to be selling below the yellow. And then we're below the yellow and he's buying like right, like right below the yellow. And I'm just like, what, what do you, I don't understand what you're looking at here. Is he doing it? Well, I guess I know he's using some order flow information. Yeah. He, yeah. He's got the, he's got the old footprint stuff, but I mean, he, he uses, he uses all my setups too, but there was, there was a little bit of stuff there earlier, but I just noticed the last couple of days he's done it a couple of times where we were, you know, the way I'm starting to be taught is you want to be way, you know, above these levels, you want to be long below them, you want to be short. And he was like taking, again, taking, you know, we're below the levels and he's taking longs, like just below them. So I, wow. I don't know. <clears throat> yeah, I see, I wouldn't do that. So, I mean, I guess, well, what are the, what, the general rules that if you were to lay out like five rules or something, what are the rules? One, you know, if I break like here, we, I would expect with this kind of energy to come back up here, short this right at the, the number, and we should continue to break and go lower down to here. We should do that, okay? We didn't, went sideways. I would be long right in here on that break. I'd be looking for the direction line. So I can go long from, you know, I can go long from here to here and here to here.
but then I'm looking to go short from you know here to here, want this to break and come into here. And then re, you know, re wash, rinse, and repeat the cycle. Right. So when I broke this, and I mean we had a little bit of energy here, and I know 48 was some pretty strong support yesterday. But I don't know if we're going to go ahead and break it and can continue on down. And I would think that this is a trade I'll take. I mean, we sat here fighting on the level, broke, come up. I'll sell that number. I'll risk to here. Right, right back there where we fought on the level. And I'm expecting it to come to here. Now, if I don't get that, then you know i don't want to be short in this trade any longer and i want i'm expecting it to rotate back up right. to me and while there's good trades in the middle like we saw in, in the 76 area and maybe with book map that'll become a little bit clearer the strongest trades are starting very close to these levels. Yeah, I caught one yesterday um, in crude later in the day when it broke through the yellow <clears throat> and we had a volume set up there. It was perfect and it broke, it broke the yellow and then just literally sold off like 100 straight ticks, so sold off a full dollar. Oh, that's sweet. Yeah, I don't. Do you have crude up or no? Um, I, crude today was not the best. That's and that's where today. we go back to yesterday's trade, yesterday afternoon. You can see it. Oh, right in here. Right there. So. We, we broke below and then I got, a, there was a volume signal. Um, I can't remember the exact signal it was, but I even put it in the room and we literally broke that. We, we, we stayed below the yellow and then we broke the volume area and it was gone. I mean, that was just, you could see it was a straight shot. It could have to run like a half hour. Right, and <clears> we <throat> couldn't get to here. Exactly, yeah. Couldn't get past here, couldn't get there. Twice, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's interesting. Looks like a inverted uh, head and shoulders. Yeah. But if I can't get here and we start falling back down, yep, yeah, here. And I think we broke that yesterday, didn't we? Yeah, we broke it. I was going golf and I got out right in front of it and we broke a little further. I was still, I still was happy with the trade. I wasn't mad I missed that last 30, 30 ticks, but uh, yeah, that was perfect. I know we, we struggled around that 62, 10 area for quite a bit. I didn't yep. see that. But that's exactly, I mean, to me, that's the ideal trade. We couldn't, I mean, we broke the direction, came back and tested it tried to go higher, came back and tested it again, still couldn't get there. My guess is that ran a few stops right in there mm -hmm. and then rolled over. Yeah, that was, that was even more powerful than what I even thought. Like, I mean, I was just happy or excited because it broke the yellow, but I wasn't even considering that we never can move it up, move up to that orange level either. Yeah, we should be we should be going there. We should be tagging at least tagging it. And when we couldn't on three attempts, that was beautiful. Yeah. Yes. Uh, I am doing some new markets. Uh, silver's one of them. Okay. Silver, RB, HG, 
H O. I think that's what, it for. What's R B? Uh, gasoline. Oh, I never, I never traded that. I see. This is. <laughs> This is what I'm talking about, where we just generate a new set of levels, can't get there, roll back and hold, break this. That tells me I'm I'm this is where I'm going. Yeah. Break a new set of levels, hold the prior big blue. This is where we're going. Yeah, that's great. So what would you say right now though at the bottom there? Or it didn't make it the big blue. What are you thinking on the far right? I'm thinking, right. I'm thinking as soon as I broke that, I should be here. I should be going down here. And so this you wouldn't is, be long now, though. You would say, okay, once we get back above the yellow, then it's a. I, I would not be long. I would, I would be having you know trade management in place on this because I would still be expecting this to, to play out and, and tag down into big blue. But what if right there it gets back above the yellow, then what are you thinking? Then I'm going back up this way. Okay. And the, the whole premise is because it couldn't get to big blue, right? Right. I mean, on top of going above the yellow. Right. And there we base on it. That was the end of the day. Yeah, at least the orange, right? Right. Wow, that's awesome. I mean, I this should be hitting here. This little buying bar is your first clue, but this should be coming up, you know, holding worst case here where we broke and coming back in into here and setting up for a strong support long and we couldn't and when we sit here and base on that i'm saying oh okay i'm going back up right and this is where when you learn the volume stuff this is really going to help you because so many times like at that low there you're going to get like a bullish volume setup and you can be out of the trade right it's like okay the, the real-time volume is coming in here telling me that this is not going any lower right now i'm out and then i'll wait and reassess and then you, you avoid having to carry that thing all the way back up too. Right, so that's what, or being that's, stubborn. Right, and that's what I do all the time. If I, if I have a position on, I do not ignore. So if I get short, I'm not ignoring, if a, if a bullish signal comes in, I'm not ignoring it. I mean, it's the whole premise of my of my trading. I, I, don't, I don't ignore it when I just don't want it to be happening, right? I get out of the trade. I'm just like, okay, well, something's stopping this here, so I'm out, right? So it's, right. And this would be a perfect example where you know you're you're thinking it's going to go to blue you get the, you get the volume signal there you're like okay i'm out of this trade and i'll reassess now once we get back to the yellow and see what happens type of thing right and it's just like the es breaking green but not going to to big blue something happened there that held it couldn't didn't have enough selling pressure to take it down into the the larger support in the in the 40 area right yeah that's what i was hoping for at the end of the day and then it just we ran out of time but definitely i was thinking we can get there and no dice so i don't know if you're interested in in any of the new markets or if you've got enough on your plate um for what you're trading already what's ho Heating oil. Okay, yeah. See, I've never tried. Yeah, I got. I, I mean, know. I just, I, I knew I was going to do new levels, so I kind of did a, a survey. What's your wish list? Right. And RB, and heating oil, came up more than once. So I thought, well, you know, if I'm spending the time and energy to generate new levels because I don't normally do that very often because it takes a lot of computing power to to get all this data analyzed so I thought okay I'll run them clearly somebody out there wants them I mean I had some people just say they love RB and I just go 
Why are you <laughs> trading crude? <laughs> Never traded that ever. You know, well, it's so copper. thin. It's you so got, you got copper. Copper, I got copper. I did that. Okay. Uh, I haven't traded that much, but uh, definitely moves. So I would, I'd be interested to watch that. Here's our fight. Gosh, look at that. And there, there's, I know you, you probably think I'm wackadoodle, but there's usually like, a, like when there's this little fight, those are usually the best moves because we're clearly having a little battle here. Right. Well, we call that balance in my room, right? So it's exactly what it is. It's, it's traders taking positions, guys going long, guys going short. Whoever's wrong has to puke up the position. That's all right. that is. But I haven't looked at uh, any of the new markets uh, aggressively. Oh, and then when we, yeah, when we got back above, there's our fight. We break above the prior support off to the race as we go. Which market's this? Oh, this is, this is copper. Copper. And here's our fight between the prior support and the direction line. All right. Well, this looks this chart looks just like gold in the afternoon today. We we hung under the yellow, and it was about to be a major balance breakout or a false breakout in, in the structure stuff that I look at, and it kind of held there and then helped people below the yellow. And once we got back above the yellow, we got a huge buy ice come in. You can go back, you know, and look at it in the record in the room, um, and it just took off. So that's yeah, exactly I'd like to it. see that. <clears throat> yeah, here's the the other one. Tried to break, couldn't. And then Yeah, I guess you would call this your balance area. Right. Well, even the one to the left of there was a good balance when it broke down below there. Right? That was oh, a yeah. big balance right there. I mean, you, you uh -huh. only have them there, but it was still a good balance. And then, so my long was, uh, what time was my long? You go to the right, I think more. Let's see what I'm talking about. Yeah, there you go. So it, it just could not get below that. I mean, it came back to the yellow, like it had so many chances to break down and it came back below the yellow. And then it, at that 56 level, that's where I, uh, the big ice came in right there at the, at the yellow, right went before it launched above there, uh -huh. right there. And then it would, you had the volume signal gone, and that's a pretty big move for you know uh, extended trading hours. You know what I mean? Gold right. closes at, at twelve thirty central, so that was usually it doesn't do much at at that time. So that was a pretty decent move. move right. Like to me, gold from two a.m. central to about eight a.m. central is the sweet spot for me. Right. But I think it'll be interesting to see what you're bringing in with it to kind of complement it. Oh, it'll definitely complement it. Trust me. I mean, it's it's what that's what drives the market is the volume, right? And when you can learn how to read that on top of your levels, it's going to be eye-opening to say the least. You're just wow. basically, and what I tell everyone is like, you know, most traders out there, they just don't have all the information. You can be the best chartist in the world. Like you can be the best at your levels. You still don't have all the information. You still don't have what's happening in real time volume, right? Once you get that missing piece, the sky's the limit. I just have to, I think, get my eye, the visual of book map. You do it so effortlessly yeah i've been looking at it for a while though that's the once you once you learn it, it it's it's really simple i mean it, what it's displaying you just have to again you'll learn it after it's not going to take too long and then then you'll see everything and then again it, it's i i couldn't be more excited about apply, applying these my setups to your levels like it's going to just be i've already seen it in action I'm, again i'm watching it for two days i caught that huge crude move and i caught the goal this afternoon i mean <laughs> it's it's again when you can get the real time volume backing up your levels that's exactly what you want then you right. know your level is is legit 
you got big money there, let's play. Right, why not? Right. Why not take advantage of it? Right, exactly. Is there anything else I can show you? I don't know, I mean, if you got any other specific setups you look for or anything else that you think I should look well, for? I do, I do use some market profile um, with a Ranko chart. And I don't know if you want to see that or not. It's a little bit busy of a chart. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I'd use market profile too. It's basically just basically over, you're overlaying these levels with market profile levels, right? I'm right. Assuming. Yeah. Yeah, no, I mean, that's fine. I, I just want to know things specific to your levels, if there's anything else right. that I should be aware of. And, um, you know, I, I kind of got it with the, what should happen, what didn't happen. I like that. Um, and then when it does get through a certain level, you, you're expecting it to go to the next level. The only thing I'm a little confused about are these sub levels and how much weight you give those. That's the only thing that's kind of, that I'm kind of hazy on. Um, the one thing you need to kind of pay attention to is if a market stays in a set of levels multi-day. Okay. Because that is higher time frame um, congestion or consolidation. And if it just cannot break over multi days, it usually means a very large move is coming when it finally breaks out of the, you know, it'll start setting up. And then the large the move tends to be much larger because it's had that multi-day compression of energy. So right. if a market gets stuck in a set of levels and they just cannot shift out of them, when they finally do, it's usually explosive. Yeah, that that's good to know. I mean that's the basic premise of what we look at in balance areas and the bigger the balance area, the bigger the move because you're going to have all these longer term traders puking out and things like that. But that's good to know as far as because, you know, your levels aren't necessarily always apparent balance areas per se, right? There's not always just easy, easily drawn boxes, right? But you can tell right. that's good to know if they are in those levels for a long period of time, then you can expect a bigger move. Yeah, like before gold broke the 1800, it stayed in that set of levels. I think it was four days, just oh, yeah. bouncing back and forth. Yeah, and oh, then, trust me. I tried oh. trading it multiple times <laughs> in that level. Us in the room, we're doing, we're all trying to, you know, every way we trade it, I think it would just stop, stop, and, and then rip the other way. Stop, rip the other way. Stop, rip the other way. Right. <laughs> And it, I mean, it, and, but when it broke. <laughs> yep. Well, that break of that area was as well the biggest stop run I've ever seen in there. It was uh, 1,300, the 13 or 1,400 buy stops. And it never, it's never come back there. Right. So that's what I mean. It's like you have your levels, you know, it was in the, those levels for multiple days. Then you get your 1,300 buy stop run, you know, it's gone. Right. right. There's no question. Bye. <laughs> bye bye. Right. So that's something that I do pay attention that if we get stuck in a set of levels for more than, you know, more than a couple of days that I know that it is, the market is setting up for a much larger move. And that certainly correlates to your uh, larger time frame balance area. Right. I'm guessing you'll see it on a profile when you have multi-day on your profile, you just do a composite on that and you'd kind of see the same same thing. Right. Which might be interesting to look at when it gets stuck in a set of levels to look at a composite profile because that might tip the hand. Oh, absolutely. On the break. And then what, um, what did you find out about the, the uh, refreshing? Because I, I have to do it manually still. On, on, on uh, Sierra's or 
is there a fix to that or okay keep... that should not be happening because my sierra has been updating flawlessly but okay. yours is not no i mean not every time sometimes it does some markets it does some okay. markets it doesn't. okay i gotta get back with the programmer on that because it should be updating automatically we had that problem we got it fixed and now it looks like it's showing up again yeah definitely on mine right and my sierra programmer is different than my ninja trader programmer so i'll have to get with him okay. i know sierra can be um Sometimes it just seems like it doesn't like the level. <laughs> it'll be a slow load, and then all of a sudden it'll correct itself and it's fine. So he needs to fix that. He needs to add the show prior, and he needs to lighten the load time on him. Yeah. Okay. But I've been watching Sierra for the last couple of days, and my levels have changed automatically so it's and i hadn't gotten any emails from anyone else saying theirs hadn't so it's hmm. good to know that uh i still need to go back and have him check this yeah that's interesting because i know some some guys in the room um were using sarah as well and they said theirs weren't updating either and then that's when i asked and they're like well if you hit control insert it will refresh it but i know some guys are having the same problem i think I think yeah, you shouldn't have to do that. They should populate automatically because you can't sit and do a control insert right. or reload data when you're in the middle of trading or right. have to do it to, just to see if a new set of levels came in. How often do a new set of levels come in if we're in between, say we're in between red and blue, how often do new levels come in? Well, we new levels won't come in until red or right. blue have been broken. Okay, that's good to know. Yeah, so we won't get a new set of levels unless we're near the big red or big blue. Otherwise, they'll stay in that set. Okay, it's good to know. Because the algo is saying this is your ultimate resistance up here at big red and this is your ultimate support down here at big blow right and if the market keeps holding the direction line and you keep staying one side or the other you know your probabilities uh certainly increase that uh you're going to break that those upper or lower lines yeah, so how do you read it if it just say we come to big red like for instance i think it was nasdaq today this morning and it just kept hugging the red i mean how would you interpret that i mean obviously we broke down but would you interpret that because it did try to break above like we said it went 30 points above but if it just hugs a line what how do you usually interpret that like does that mean it still holding as so, so for instance that would be resistance that it because it can't break through or it's building energy right on that line and you should expect it to break like how do you usually view that usually if it like um probes the line and then gets back under it like the first time after that back under i really want to be trading that to the counter trend side to the sell short side okay and we did that this morning in pre-market and then we built like that wall like you were talking about this never-ending wall this should have sent it down right and here when we get close to the open that should have sent it down I would take these cells with tight stops. And I, I would buy this because 
like you said, this is 30 point move. This should come in and hold and we should go up and generate new levels. So I would take this long right on the line and risk to here. It's like a 10 point NASDAQ risk. And when it broke, I would sell it. But when it sits there like that all night long, that that to me is just sheer frustration. All right, so let me show you something here um, where you could have avoided buying that by, right, like you said, once it broke there, you would have gone long, right? Right. That was right at, that was right at the open, basically? Right. So now look at this, watch how powerful this is here. Let me take this back here quickly. <clears throat> You got my chart? Uh-huh. All right, so see, this is that move we just looked at above the level, mm -hmm. and then look what it ran into. 426 cell icebergs, which is huge. My threshold in um, in NASDAQ, which you'll, you'll get the threshold and stuff when I share that course with you, but threshold is around 150, 200 is a lot. This was 400, 400 and over 425 icebergs right so that would be i don't know what i was doing at this time or i missed this this is huge this is a so this is how i draw these zones right so you come in here and then you so do that let's get rid of this so you come in here and you just take your little um you can pull up your little cursor the cross here up here and then you find out where that started so it started coming in right around here and then a stretch, you can see the spike is stretched all the way to over here. So the way I would draw this zone, would I put it at the start of it? Say right about here. And then it ended. You can see where it dried up right here. But you got to incorporate all the prices that happened inside that zone, right? So you can see this blue spike, incorporate all these bubbles that happened in that area. So I got to make sure I get under this bubble here. And then a lot of times I'll, I'll do... Um, the cell ice is I make it black. So if you see black on my chart, it's usually cell ice. It just helps distinguish. So I would do that. Whoops. Oh man, I didn't mean to do that. All right, there you go. So there's that zone, right? And this is just the typical, this happens almost every single time, right? So this started. So even if you were long, and you're like, okay, this is it. And then you see this, you're like, um, yeah, that shouldn't be happening. And we definitely shouldn't be breaking below this zone. And then what you got, which happens 90% of the time, I'd say 80% of the time, you get a move away from the zone, retest. And then when it fails, it's gone. Right. This happens all the time. It doesn't happen every time. This is why I talk about my room. You got to determine, hey, do I want to be aggressive on the first break of the zone or am I going to wait for the retest fail? Either right. way. You, if you were long, you were not, you were out when you saw this setup. And that would help you avoid having to carry that thing all the way back down to below the, below the, um, the, the big blue or big red, I mean. Big red. Yeah, but yeah, 539. So when you've got that ice zone and big red there, it's like game on. Right. But this, this was the move above that zone. Though. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what I'm saying, though. It's like you you would have been gung ho long, but the minute you right. saw this, you're like, wait a sec, wait a second, something's wrong here. Okay, once this zone fails, I'm just going to get out of this long for now, and then I'm going to wait. And then all of a sudden, you see this thing rip through back through blue, you're the big blue, and you're like, okay, now see what I mean? It's what happened up here, here. is going to give you confidence of what happened here when it breaks, right? So this is it. Right. You saw that huge cell ice up there, nobody knows this, right? Nobody knows that happened, but people using BookMap, you know, okay, first of all, I was long, I'm out, I'm out up here. I don't have to wait, I don't have to wait for this to get back below this, whatever right. color that is, because there's multiple things there. And then as soon as this breaks, you're like, now I wanna go short. I know we should have gone up and, and built new levels. That didn't happen. I saw there was huge cell ice that won, now I'm going short and then when, or you wait for the retest for this and you got that and then you catch the huge move. But that the real time volume would have warned you something was amiss. 
and you wouldn't have to have to have had to hold it all right. the way down back below this line is my point you could have been out up here right right you wouldn't have had to take the loss and right because this was a humongous bearish setup and what also happened here is see this these long orange lines that's just liquidity liquidity is just big orders in the book and the games that these guys play they always get their way liquidity always gets their way so as a like a person that doesn't know anything about trading or knows very little they would say at the open here they'd be like oh man look at all these big orders above i want to be short no it's the opposite when you see big orders the market finds they will put again i know this because i used to play this game when i was large i was a huge trader right i used to put in thousand lots in the es just like this and i would push the market right into my orders so if you see resting liquidity like this you can bet your butt that we're going to go into that liquidity right because they they want their fills and they will get the market up there to get their fills and then they get their fills then you get the sell ice gone right, right. so suck right up my, into it but my point is say this didn't happen say this zone didn't happen your premise would have been perfect on the break of the blue down here you would have said hey i know i i want to be long this market because i see all this liquidity up here i know we're going to at least liquidity and another way you can trade too is say say we again say you don't get this signal and there's nothing happening if the market fails to hold above the liquidity and once it gets back below that's another reason you can get out instead of waiting again this is minus this this happening if you're just playing liquidity and you you know you see big blue down here and we get above it you're like i'm long yes yes awesome all right we cleared we cleared through the liquidity this should be gone if this gets back below these liquidity levels you don't want to be in this trade either but you got that and you got sell ice, you really don't want to be long up there, right? That's what this, this is the door this is going to open for you with your levels. It's going to be like, it's going to be silly, I think for you. Well, I can't wait. Anything yeah. that gives me more of an edge, I'm happy with. Well, this, this is the ultimate edge. There's nothing more than real-time volume that is going to, you can draw lines on the chart till you're blue in the face. Real-time volume is what confirms the lines, basically, right? When you start to learn to apply these 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 setups at your levels, you're you're going to be shocked. Like it, it, it's going to be scary. It's going to be scary for everybody that's using both now. That's been that's a good thing, but especially for you that already know that already know how to use your levels the right way. Now you just when you overlay the real-time volume, you're going to be lethal. Well, I'm ready for to be lethal. <laughs> <laughs> well, my, I mean, you know, the stuff I'm using is, is very effective, but I think just adding these is just going to be even better. Again, Chris is swearing by him. He's been swearing by him for like eight months, and I wish I would have looked at him earlier, but I'm again, I'm very hesitant of ever adding anything else to my chart. Like for me to even add in this, we call him algo guy, this is just a simple um, moving average ribbon band. For me to even add this in was a huge deal for me. Like I had to watch it for like six months to even one, consider it for my own trading, let alone introduce it to other people, right? So that's how hesitant I am to add anything to charts because I think it just hurts traders, but that is powerful. And then again, Chris has been talking about your level. I just wish I would have looked at him earlier, but it is what it is. I'm looking at them now, so and I can already see the power in them. So this is going to be good for for everybody. <clears throat> well, I know Chris has uh, talked about him quite a bit. He'll say yeah, I yeah. I, t I talked about him in in a Skype room or something, and and um, you should be getting a few people your way. Yep, it's just a start. Again, I do those bookman webinars, and the more I learn how to use them and grow confident with them then I'm, they're just going to be a you know a mainstay in my when I'm talking on the webinars and stuff too so you'll gradually see some customers come in from there too so it will well, be I'm good. excited about that I'm excited to learn this product yeah so I'll send I think you, I've um, looked at it before and it was just like overwhelming yeah trust me once you look at it and understand it you're going to be like oh, this is the simplest thing that i can be looking at <laughs> it really is i mean the blue bubbles are market or market buy orders the red bubbles are market sell orders the icebergs are hidden orders the orange are stop runs and that's it's it doesn't get much simpler and then the and then the this the orange these orange things is just more liquidity it's just like a heat map for orders so the, the darker it is the bigger the orders that are at those prices that's all it is You'll you'll catch it. You'll catch on very quick. Oh, I hope so. Oh, I absolutely will. 
Okay. Um, do you care if I share this video with my room members? I mean, it doesn't, I don't think it's going to hurt your course at all. It'll probably help your course, if anything. Is that okay? I don't have any problem with that. Okay. All right. So I'm going to put that, I'm just going to put this in my replay room and then I'm going to give you access to that drive so you can go back and watch any webinar you want to watch for the last month. Um, just be aware before we talked, when I first looked at your website, it looks like it's from like 1982, and I kind of made fun of that in one of the webinars. But other than that, I don't say anything That's bad. That's okay, because it is from 1982. <laughs> so if you're watching, I don't want you to be like, what the hell, he's making fun of me. I just I just made fun of the website a little bit. I even said, if my my if my website looks like it's like futuristic compared to that website, that's basically what I said. Oh yeah, it's, <laughs> well, I told you I didn't mark it. <laughs> right. Exactly. Well, now, now you're gonna. Well, now you don't have to either. It's basically gonna come to you. But I just didn't want you to be offended by. That. Yeah, it's kind oh, of funny. You won't be the first person to have told me that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, great. Um, so I will. Uh, I'll share that, and then I'm gonna send you access. I'll send you a coupon code for the course. Um, you just go on and purchase it, um, like quote unquote purchase it. And you put the coupon code, and it'll give you 100% off. And then you can start to watch that and learn the setups. Just be aware, like um, I used, because I made that course last July and they didn't have some of the settings here. So I'm on sliding mode now. You'll learn all this through the course. But in the in my course, I'm an exponential. It's a little different. Um, and it's explained in there. And again, there's like, I'll send you the, the follow-up emails that I send because there's like a, explanations for this stuff, uh, what each one of these are. But I'm in the sliding mode, just so you know, that's basically the only difference. But um, you know, I get nothing but rave reviews from the courses to this to, to this day. And again, I made it almost a year ago. So like, you'll also get like a threshold level, so you're gonna know what's a lot in ES versus Nasdaq. So for instance, you know, I don't trade any iceberg that's under 700 in in ES, but in Nasdaq, 150 is a lot. So obviously, the you know the values change between the markets. So you'll get you'll get a list of the thresholds for each market as well. And I think I got like 22 markets on there. Well, that ought to keep me busy. Yep, you'll definitely learn the setups, and then uh, and we'll go from there. But yeah, I'll, uh, I'm excited to get, start using this. I can go back, and the other thing I'll share with you too, it's a data feed folder. So when you do get Bookmap, you can go in here, and when you restart, actually, I can X, I'm gonna X out of this right now, and I'll show you how to do this quickly. Um, when you do get the program, do, do you have Bookmap yet, or you still gotta get it? I still have to get it. Okay, so when you do get it, you know, we talked about what you need to get. You need to get the, um, you need to purchase the SI indicator and you need to get rhythmic data. But when you get in here, you just go in here, replay data. When you, so you just literally double click on the book map icon and you go replay data. And then you go in here and I'm gonna share with you the folder with all of my data feeds for the entire year. So you can go back to any day and practice your, see what your levels look like with the setups once you learn the setups. It's an awesome tool. And you can put on trades like on the, um, so you go right here, this is, what, this is what's going to pop up, and then you'll go to, like, we'll say today, right? So say I want to replay today, just double click there, and you'll see it'll populate, and you'll get all the markets that I watch, and you'll literally, and you can fast forward it. It says it goes up, like right here's the little fast forward button. It says it goes to, this is actually back to last night. Um, you can see the overnight stuff too. It says it goes to 500 or something, but it doesn't really. <laughs> it goes like, the most it goes is like 128 times. But you can literally so it stops one six eight five. No, and you're you, and you'll get the you'll get the um the actual voice alerts and everything. It's awesome. But so like gold here, right? So if you want to practice, say your level was right here, you just go over here and say I want to buy I want to buy gold. Boom! You can actually trade it. You get your PL. It's awesome. It's a great tool to practice. You can literally go back and test all your levels with this stuff for the entire year if you want to, right? See how cool that is. Sounds good. Yeah, so you can speed it up, slow it down, trade at regular time, right? Kind of how you would react normal time. It's it's awesome. So anyway, you'll have access to that. You'll have access to all my webinars, um, and then I also have a position sizing position sizing chart um, uh, spreadsheet that I use too. I don't know if you want that or not, but I'll send it to you as well, and then I'll send you access to the uh, to my course. Okay, well, I look right. uh, forward to doing that. Yeah. Learn those as soon as you can, because the sooner you do, the, the quicker you're going to be lethal, in my opinion. Like I said, I'm ready to be lethal. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks for getting on with me on a Friday. I appreciate it. And uh, have a great weekend, and then we'll touch base next week. Okay. Sounds good.
Thanks, Linda. I'll talk to you later. I mean, Pam. I'm sorry, Linda. I'm That's sticking fine. Ludwig. Pam, <laughs> Pam Ludwig. Sorry. You're not offended by the lugs, are you? It's just no. easy, it's an easier way to say it. It is sticking, so yeah. I hope you're not offended by it. No, I'm not offended. It takes okay, a lot right. to offend me. <laughs> All right. Thanks. Thanks, Pamela. I will talk to you uh, next week. Sounds good. Thanks. Bye. Bye.